I'm kidding. <laughs> Welcome and hi guys. Ooh, bro, it's needed. Um. Hi guys and welcome to another video. Welcome. Um, it, welcome, I'm Adrike, and thank you so much for joining. I'm gonna be sitting comfortably here while I talk about another Nigerian boom, boom, boom. gonna go straight into the story today's celebration is for a special lady one of my all-time faves i feel like i'll be saying this all the time but she really is one of my all-time faves um fibs today is all about ajia gambo sawaba because obviously it's in the title but i'm really excited to be talking about this this woman come on just um yeah, so let's go. Gambo was born in Zaria and the northern part of Nigeria. But before she was born, obviously her mom, her dad met. And her dad was actually an immigrant from Ghana. And um, her mom was a Nupe woman. And um, they're actually, fun fact, I don't know why I keep always saying fun fact. And then it's not that fun. <laughs> because fun fact, the Nupe people inspired the term takwa. And I remember actually when i would hear that in relation to me and how i spoke my language yoruba um it, it's it's almost like a slur i don't know I, like so i'm really sorry if like that word is offensive but um it's basically let me just break it down it, it's almost like when let's say you say another yoruba person meets a yoruba person speaking their language and it's not quite right it's a bit like the accent isn't there and it's just not flowing as much what they then do is they they're like hmm, you're speaking yoruba like tapas but yeah so they're not yoruba <laughs> but um they're just amazing as well so gambo's mom was from that side of nigeria it was in niger states our dad as i said earlier was an immigrant from ghana so she was like ghanaian nigerian <laughs> god knows we love us some ghanaians but not their rice because ours is better, not the jollof rice. No, 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 no. Everything gonna come here, darling. But they're... when they start to talk about our rice, that's when um, we, we we start to call their bluff because um, like, don't be lying, don't be lying, don't be lying, don't be lying. Okay. Gambo was born in February 1933 and just amazing. She was the fifth of six children and she actually came before two twins, a set of twins. And in that culture, in the northern parts of Nigeria, they would call, give her the name Gambo, you know. Um, I hope I'm not confusing you, but I would just liken it to the Yoruba culture, which is where my ethnic origin, you know. Because in the Yoruba, similar to the Yoruba culture, when a child is born after twins, after a set of twins, um, in the same family, they're called Idowu. She was almost like the Idowu. Um, but we're not talking. I'm not talking about your right now. I don't care. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I'm gonna. I'm still gonna put this in. I'm still gonna put this in. But let's move on to our celebrant of the day. She was called Gambo because she was. She came after a set of twins. Our, our family obviously loved her. But just earlier on, she was always feisty, always the one to talk and speak up. And she was labeled very stubborn, you know. Children in general, when they when when people feel like they, they, they're outspoken, they speak their mind, they're often labeled as being too difficult and stubborn children or whatever. But, you know, she didn't care. She was that kind of child who, let's say someone was fighting and she saw that it wasn't fair because some, maybe one fighter was stronger than the other. She would literally go over to the weak person and be like, I'll take your place, go, go, and then fight that person. It was always about like standing up for people who, who did not have the strength that she had. So she always would have no trouble standing in a place. If you had a fight and you were too tired, too weak to do it, call 199 Gambo Sawaba. She, Sawada, get the name right. I'm sorry. So she would come in there and fight. So from early on, that was it. But she had an amazing teacher who um, actually upgraded her to like class perfect because 
she the the, the teacher did not um see that as a threat it was like ah you've got leadership skills okay like let's up you so it was re really beautiful but our education was cut short really really quick because at the age of 10 her dad died at the and, and then three just three years later her mom as well passed away so i mean not only was she not even really allowed to be educated because of the way things were in the country at the time but her parents were just amazing and encouraged it but the parents that were encouraging it and giving her the funds for the education it was like they were gone and she had gone to school there before her parents died and learned the quran in arabic and Aousa as well the time she was 13 she was married off to an older to an older man who had actually fought in the world war and this was where she um, had her first child, her only child actually. Um, obviously, af after they had this child together, um, they weren't getting along or whatever, so they decided to divorce. And he left, she left, they were in their separate ways. And they were like, cool, that was lovely. Um, bye. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it was, you know, it, it wasn't as tumultuous. Well, that's a big word. Um, it wasn't as tumultuous, it was because my brother used it today, so that's been in my head. It wasn't as, um, turbulent as the unfortunately as the other um marriages that she would later on ha go on to have so it was um yeah so she had she had a child at this point by the time she was 17 she had left the marriage and she was like yes freedom you know she can finally start to get involved with things that like looking at inequality she was definitely against child marriage she did not like um inequality sexism all that kind of so she did not like people being poor um as politics at that time was something that was ripening and i mean politics in the grand scheme of things of bringing um civilians in and getting them involved you know and the main party was the northern people's congress um, party in the north and she was someone who fought for herself and i guess looking at the way things were and set up because the british um, government actually backed up this um, political party so she was like no she joined the people on the opposite side and she was like I'll be part of them so she joined the party on the other side and they were called the Northern Element Progressive Union there were definitely people who were against the British rule and definitely and just wanted independence you know that was around the time when um, independence the talk of independence was very obviously imagine at this time that Nepu was not um or is it NEPU they were not even allowed to even hold meetings so it was it was a it was a party that um why don't I say party? It was, it was a party that was that was changing things, but of course um, the government did not want it to happen. So they would get threatened and, you know, for fear of their lives, the meetings would definitely be holding in secret. And this was actually led by a man called Aminu Kano, and he was definitely an amazing person as well, but I just wanted to say that and definitely deserves his own episode. But um, he, he started this progressive party and they would always just like, you know, the British people and the other party um, would threaten them and it wasn't, they, they, they were basically seen as radicals, you know, and like, ooh freedom what a concept so but yeah, yeah so Ajia Gambo was at this meeting she would always talk about you know child marriages is bad women need to be educated and obviously there were a lot of women that were not majority of the women were not even allowed to be in that meeting even though they were a progressive party so she would go to their houses and explain what had happened in the meetings and also you know educate them on how to move forward really um, from the current stage but the men were definitely not happy because they thought come on like why are you here speaking you should be making out some food literally and um because obviously that time a lot of um a, a lot a lot of beliefs made no sense you know um the goal was yeah i'm not gonna let this stop me um it's really interesting that even at the times where she was in existence <laughs> um growing up and just being a woman um and a girl she, societal um standards and how she needed to be quiet in, since she was a woman and just you know just don't get involved you know in men's business but she was like no nope. and this actually got her arrested um the police came after her and was jailed not once not twice not three times 16 times why did i do that 
16 times this woman went to prison um to jail and just paint you a little bit of the picture she was actually quoted as saying that there's no part of our body that has not been that that blood has not come out of she was beaten by men she was um assaulted she like it wasn't an experience that you know she she, she wasn't just locked up even though being locked up is not fun am i right pandemic <laughs> no Ooh, i just compared the pandemic to jail finna get cancelled or even arising okay so before even arising or arriving what locked her up for reasons like um they locked her up for reasons like she was too loud she was too talk she was always talking about things that were um uncomfortable to people you know like inequality violence um all this kind of stuff anyway but she was getting abused and put in prison she was like that's okay obviously that's not okay but she would come out and um get even more support from the women because she would tell them about the things that were happening to her at one point she was actually in jail and they stripped her naked and they beat her up it was awful you know um so it was a really bad experience but she kept going and she kept fighting and talking about things at one point she actually um got in contact with mommy from Layo kuti who i talked about um a couple of videos ago it was away ago away ago Ugh, english but yeah so i also talked about familiar kuti and i i you know I, I do feel like there's more to talk about but i'm so i'm so glad that even in this story her lioness and her power still shines through because when gambo literally reached out to her and she traveled from zaria to she's traveled from the north to abel kuta where um Fumilayo was um she gave her advice Fumilayo would give her advice and was almost like a, a mentor to her with El Pro with the things going on i just give her information because as things were happening getting hot in abel kuta and um, things were also like boiling you know in the north and beautifully enough things were getting fire 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 where margaret ekbo was as well so these three are amazing people and you know what's amazing right let me tell you let me tell you so cool i was like on the googles again no i was on the youtubes again and i came across this amazing musical um it, it it's it's in nigeria but i think it was like last year so i know when it's gonna be out again but the concept is absolutely amazing like that's like my kind of stuff so let me explain let me explain before i keep going on so it's literally a musical i haven't seen it but i'm pretty sure like it's amazing so i endorse it amazing 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 ah! So the concept from what I understand is highlighting these three women, Margaret Egbo, Gambo Sawaba, and um, Fumilaya Kuti, and almost creating this, um, I think they created a fictional character and that helps this, like a Nigerian lady, that and, and this she meets with these three amazing people um, and they help her. <laughs> Are you not excited? Are you not excited? Yeah, so that's exciting to me. Anyway, back to Gambo Sawaba. In 1953, she started the women's wing of the nephew party, and she was just so influential that talking about the political growth in the North, there's no way you would not mention her name and give her her flowers and give her credit because she definitely brought something just revolutionary and something badass. Am I allowed to say that? yeah it's my channel <laughs> like she was so like amazing um and even onto the time she died she would she only had one biological child but she adopted so many children she brought people in and she was always about let's take care of those who can't take care of themselves people who don't know the information and how to take care of themselves better how to stand up for themselves she was no that's a bad word. Someone who definitely did not stand for rubbish, you know. Um, very fierce, incredible woman. Um, and yeah, 
these women from you know the north the south the west they they just support and the east as well where my god egbo was they supported each other so much that in even in 1958 then branch of the nephew party the women's the women's branch of the nephew party joined the nigerian women's union which was something that was started by fumilayo kuti and they just you know continued to support each other campaign about women's rights and you know stand in the gap for those women who were still not allowed to maybe by their husbands or the men in their life to step out and speak and um yeah it was just a time to, that that women were really doing amazing things and even today you know someone that just kind of reminds me of this women this woman um is aisha yesufu um and she's also just amazing woman um but yeah, and she needs she definitely needs her own video. I think you know what after this after this season, yes, I'm having seasons. I'm having seasons. I'm having, we're having we're having seasons. I've said it. After this seasons of stories, I definitely will move on to living legends. And not that our history is not important, it definitely is. But I want to work on how we intertwine our history with the present. And I was about to say the past, but history is past. Anyway, you get it. You get it with the present and the future. That's what I was about to say. I was about to say the past, the present, the east. Okay, you get it. Um, but I'm so as always. Today, yesterday, tomorrow, last night, whatever. Always proud to be a Nigerian, even with all our stuff. Even with all our stuff, um, we are the greatest people on earth, and um, it's just amazing how God was like. Nigerians, like imagine, just imagine, close your eyes, close your eyes, and imagine there's no Nigerian, if you're Nigerian, right, just imagine there's no Nigerian in, there's no Nigerian, whatever, English, there are no Nigerians in the world, or worse, you're not Nigerian, and you don't know a Nigerian, <laughs> It's bad, right? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. It's a, it's a dream. It's a nightmare. We exist. And we are here to stay. And we've been doing things. We've been making changes. And we have been, you know, taking, not taking nonsense. Well, I'm going to have to edit that out. Whatever. I won't. We've not been taking nonsense. And, um, yeah, it is what it is. So let's close out with some Nigerian, nice Nigerian jam, the mixture of Nigerian and Ghanaian music. Also, um, some Adekunle gold because that's who we're not going to pretend we don't owe flowers to. We need to give him his flowers like yesterday. He's amazing. Um, but now I've gone and done what I do where it's just mix up a whole bunch of things. Um, <laughs> Coronavirus. 